what's up guys and welcome to this tutorial in this tutorial i'm going to show you how you can trigger an email notification to any user for s3 bucket events so for example you have a bucket xyz and you want to track uh, the creation or deletion of any object within that bucket via email notification so that is what exactly we are going to cover in this tutorial so let's get started so here we'll be using four services that is aws lambda s3 bucket IAM rule and SES for sending an email notification. So our flow will be like, uh, for example, any object created or deleted from the particular bucket, then it will trigger an event in the form of lambda. So the lambda will be triggered and using lambda function, the email notification will be sent to an user. So this is how our flow will be. So we will start with creating the IAM rule for lambda function. So we'll jump to the IAM management console. Here we will be creating a new role for giving the permission to the Lambda function. So here we will choose Lambda as a service and then click on next permissions. Here we'll give permissions that is SES for allowing Lambda function to send an email and the basic Lambda execute. So this will give permission to CloudWatch logs, also provide sports and get access to S3 bucket. Then click on next tags. We'll say name, oops, name, SES underscore S3. Review, we'll give it a name as Lambda S3 underscore SES. You can give whatever name you want, then create rule. Once the role is created, we will jump to the uh, Lambda management console to create the Lambda function. So we'll click on create function. I will say s3 underscore ses underscore event. We will select runtime as Python 3.6. We'll choose an existing role and choose the role that we have just created and click on create function. Now we will jump to the S3 bucket and then we will come back to the lambda function to write some code. So we will go to S3 management console. You can create a new bucket or you can also use an existing bucket. So here I will be using the existing bucket that is layer hyphen release hyphen test. Once the bucket is created and you are in the bucket, uh, we will jump to the properties panel and within the advanced settings. Uh, there is a notification option right so we will click on that uh, events sorry not notification and events option and we'll click on add notification and then we need to name this uh, notification let's say lambda underscore ses and then you can select number of uh, events uh, that on what kind of event you want to trigger an action so in my case i will just say put and all delete all object delete events then there is prefix so if you want to execute this event or execute the lambda function trigger uh, while there there is any change in the particular directory then you can just define the directory here or and then we have the suffix if you want to trigger this notification on a particular file type for example .jpg or png then you can just uh, define the file extension here i will leave it blank and in this end to uh, option we'll select lambda function and we'll see, select the lambda function that we have just created um, that is s3 SES event and we'll say save now once this is done uh, we'll jump back to the lambda function and we are going to write some code so go to the function code panel so here again we will be using uh, Bodo3, the AWS SDK for Python uh, for sending out an email. So we will say import Bodo3 and we will jump to the function and write some code. So we will say for i n event of records. So why are we doing looping the event of records? So uh, whenever any event will be triggered from S3 bucket like uh, deletion of object of, or creation of object uh, it will pass on the information like what action has been performed for example 
the delete action has been performed uh, and in which bucket and what is the file name uh, or the object name that has on which the action has been performed so all the information we will get in in this event variable so uh, we are going to send some information to the user so we will grab some information from this event variable and we will send that information uh, in the form of email so that's the reason uh, we are looping this uh, event variable so uh, the event uh, variable is basically a dictionary that we will be getting so that's the reason uh, we are looping the event and we will try to fetch some information so first of all uh, we will say action so we want to know which action has been performed like delete uh, an object or creation of object so we'll say i of event name so later i will print the uh, whole event variable so that you will get an idea uh, from where we are getting this event name or the records then uh, we need an ip address that from which source the event has been performed so it's i of request parameters of source ip address and then we want the bucket name bucket underscore name equal to i of s3 of bucket of name so here we will get the bucket name and then we want the name of the object or the file name so we'll say object equal to i of s3 of object of key so once this is done uh, then uh, we are going to define the uh, go to 3 object for SES service that is client equal to go to 3 dot client followed by the service name that is SES so what exactly we will need uh, or the what information we will need to send in the email so we will require subject so let's define subject here subject equal to string of action you can define uh, any subject that you want uh, I'm just defining uh, this subject for this tutorial purpose followed by event from the bucket name so it will say like uh, object removed event from XYZ bucket then we will require body So here uh, there are two things you can define body in the simple text format or you can also use HTML tags. So here we will say br or the break line tag I am using here. I will simply say this email is to notify you regarding following event. And we will say from where uh, this event has been performed. So for that we will say source IP. And we will say dot format action comma IP. So now we are done with the body. So now we will uh, create the message. So to pass this as parameter in the send underscore email function. So we will be using send underscore email function to send an email. So we need to uh, compile this or combine this into a dictionary. So let's say message equal to we will say subject and followed by the data of subject variable. Then we have body. Uh, we will say HTML here since uh, we have used certain tags. If you are not using any HTML text, then you can just say text instead of HTML here. And we will say data of body. You can learn more regarding this format uh, via the SES documentation. And then finally, we will say response equal to client.send underscore email. So this is the method that we will be using. Now here uh, we need to define 
three things basically one is the source email address from which you want to send an email and then another is the destination to whom you want to send the email and the message itself so we'll say source equal to so there are I think other parameters also uh, but here I am using only three parameters so again uh, in the destination I am only going to use two addresses but you can also pass uh, CC address uh, the carbon copy or black carbon copy addresses so let's go back to lambda function so I defined source then we will define uh, destination equal to so I will say two addresses followed by the list of uh, email id so you can define uh, multiple email address over here within this list and then uh, we will pass on the third parameter that is message equal to message now we are done with the code, uh, we will just save this function and let's try to delete an object from S3 bucket and let's see what happens. So we will go to overview. So let's say uh, I am deleting email trick.py selection delete. So the object has been deleted. Uh, let's check the logs here. So the event has been triggered. The logs is loading. So it's saying uh, request parameter there is a key error. So I made a spell mistake here. Uh, let me correct that. It is R E Q U E S T parameters. Let me save this and delete an object one more time. Let me delete logs.txt here. Delete. Let's go back to CloudWatch log again. So uh, as you see it is giving us the error that uh, when calling the send email operation email address is not verified. So if you want to send an uh, email to anybody uh, you are required to verify that email address. So now we need to go to the SES services or the simple email service and here I need to add an email address uh, to verify it. So since this is a sandbox account, uh, I need to verify it. So I will say shravaditri.gmail.com So once you add this email address, uh, the user will get an uh, email notification to verify that email address. So I will not be opening my email and I will verify an email uh, from my phone. So please don't spam me. Uh, on the email address so I have verified my email address through phone let me uh, reload this so it says verified right now let me go to S3 management console and delete one more object uh, let me delete this x.z delete delete and it is successfully deleted let's check the logs again The log has not been generated yet. So as you can see uh, the execution is successful. Uh, we are getting no error here. Right. So let me check my email uh, if I had received an email address on my phone itself.
so one thing we have missed here is I think the file name that which file has been deleted so we are not passing that anywhere so I think regarding event and the object is deleted so the action then object then IP so we will save this function again and let me delete one more object uh, that's finally package.zip so it is successfully deleted uh, let me reload the logs here and also I got an email on my phone and as you can see it is successfully executed and I have also uh, received an email regarding the same uh, with the file name so I am not opening my email uh, for the security reasons or the privacy reasons so I think that's it for now so this is how you can trigger an email notification to any user for S3 bucket events if you have any queries or comments then please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time